All praises to the Most High. So tonight's topic is called Six Stages of Being Born Again. Six Stages of Being Born Again. Let's open up with the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 1. Wait. Right. All wisdom cometh from the Lord mm -hmm. and, was with, and is with him forever. So all wisdom cometh from the Lord, the God of Jacob, okay, and is with him forever. So all the wisdom that the Lord has, all the wisdom that exists, guess what? The Lord, it says, it comes from the Lord. All wisdom coming from the Lord and is with him, is with the Lord forever. Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms. Okay, 147 verse 5. Psalm 147 verse 5. Let's read that. All wisdom comes from the Lord. Okay, read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 147 verse 5. Come on. Great is our Lord and of mm -hmm. great power. His Come understanding on. is infinite. You see that thing? Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. You see that thing? So all wisdom comes from the Lord and that wisdom is infinite. You understand? It's the type of wisdom that never goes out. The light just keeps going. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of John. Okay, give me John 1. Give me John chapter 1. Okay. John chapter 1 and verse 4. Let's start there. John 1 verse 4. The book of John chapter 1 verse 4. Come on. In him was life. Mm -hmm. And the life was the light of men. He says, in him, talk about Christ, he says, was life. And the life was the light of men. Keep reading. Come on. And the light shineth in darkness. And the light was what? And the light shineth in darkness. And the light shineth in darkness. Read. And the darkness comprehended it not. You see that thing? And the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness could not comprehend the light. What is the light? Get that in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Okay, he says, The darkness did not comprehend the light. What is the light? Let's read that. Proverbs 6 23. Okay, let's get there. Chapter 6, verse 23. Read. For the commandment is a lamp, mm -hmm. and the law is light. The law is what? And the law is light. And the law is light. The law is light. Come on. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So this light is God's commandment. That's God's wisdom. It says, when it shineth, it says, darkness cannot comprehend it. Watch this. Let's see what the darkness is. Get Sirach chapter 11, verse 16. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 16. Let's see what is the darkness, okay, that cannot comprehend the light. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, verse 16. Read. Error and darkness had their beginning together with sinners. Mm -hmm. And Come evil. On. And evil shall exalt with them that glory within therein. Those that glory in error and darkness. What is the error and darkness? Sin. The error in darkness goes into sin. So the darkness that is mentioned in the book of John, wickedness, evil. So go back to John 1, verse 5 again. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 5. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Mm -hmm. And the darkness comprehended it not. Jump down to verse 9. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 9. Wait. That was the true light, mm -hmm. which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He's talking about Israel. Which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He's talking about Israel. Okay, so what we're reading here is that wisdom that goes out, which is the light, and the darkness that it finds, the darkness will not be able to comprehend the light, which is God's laws. You understand? Get that in Wisdom of Solomon, okay? Wisdom of Solomon, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, and verse 30. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 30. 
for after this come at night, mm -hmm. but vice shall not prevail against wisdom. But vice shall not prevail against wisdom, meaning evil will not prevail against the light. Darkness will not prevail against the light because it says darkness comprehended it not. You understand? That's the type of wisdom that the Most High God is dwelling with. The type of wisdom that the Lord deals with. And that's how he deals with us, with the same wisdom that's infinite. You understand? Now watch this. Go back to Psalms 147 verse 5. Let's go back there. Psalms 147 verse 5. Okay, come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 147 verse 5. Great. Great is our Lord and of great power. Mm -hmm. Come on. His understanding is infinite. His understanding is infinite. You understand? It's not limited. It's infinite. But watch this. Give me Baruch 336. It says, his understanding is infinite. Okay? Watch this. Baruch 336. Read it. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 36. Mm -hmm. He has found out all the way of knowledge and has given it unto Jacob, his servant. Wait. To Israel is beloved. You see what they, you see what Baruch is saying is the he here is the law. It says the Lord found out all the way. Read verse 35 so we understand who's the subject. Okay, read that. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 35. Come on. This is our God, and there shall none other be accounted of in comparison of him. You see that thing? He says, You cannot compare our God with anything or anyone. That's what he's saying. He says, this is our God, and there shall none other be accounted of in comparison of him. You can't compare the Lord, the God of Israel with any book. Now read on, verse 36, come on. He has found out all the way of knowledge, and has mm -hmm. given it unto Jacob his servant, read. and to Israel his beloved. Remember, his knowledge is infinite. You understand? His infinite wisdom. He says he found out all the way of knowledge, meaning he's found out all his the all the infinite wisdom that the Lord has. He says, and have given it unto Jacob, and Jacob his servant, and to Israel his beloved. So this infinite wisdom that the Lord has, he gave it to Jacob. Who's Jacob? That's us. He gave it to us. You understand? Now give me Psalms 147, verse 19. Psalms 147, verse 19. I'm building, I'm building, just bear with me. Psalms 147, verse 19. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. Mm -hmm. He showeth his word unto Jacob. Come on. His statutes and his judgment unto Israel. That's what we just read in Baruch. Go ahead. He hath not dealt so with any nation. Mm -hmm. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. You see what David is saying? He says, you, are, you better praise the Lord for that day. That the Lord only gave his laws, his infinite wisdom to us. The greatest knowledge, he gave it to us. That's that infinite wisdom that the Lord gave to his sons and daughters. You understand? Israel, his beloved. Now watch this. Give me Romans 3 verse 1. Romans chapter 3 verse 1. of Romans, chapter 3, verse 1. Wait. What advantage then hath the Jew? Mm -hmm. Or what profit is there of circumcision? So the Apostle Paul is asking the question, what advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Because in order for you to, an, to have an advantage, that means somebody must be at a disadvantage when it comes to you. And there's something about, about the Jew that makes him to have an advantage over everybody on earth. You understand? And it says, what is the profit of circumcision? Meaning the covenant of circumcision that was given to our forefather Abraham in Genesis 17. Go ahead. Much every way. Mm -hmm. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. You see what the apostle Paul is saying? Is as we have an advantage over everybody on earth 
basically, what is he saying? We better. We better than everybody on this earth. That's what God is saying. Is as much everywhere, chiefly. The main reason why we better than everybody on the, upon this earth is, is because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. We were given God's commandments. God's laws is the reason why we better than all nations on earth. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 4. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 1. Wait. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statute and unto the judgment which I teach you, for to do them that ye may live, and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers hath, which the Lord God your fathers giveth you. So now we, we need to have reading classes, brothers. We need to have those reading classes again. It says, now therefore, hearken, O Israel, meaning pay attention, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you for to do them, to apply them, that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. So the Lord is, is, is saying, listen, pay attention and apply these laws so you can possess the land. That's what he's saying right there to us. Okay, go ahead. Verse 2. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, Neither shall it diminish aught from it. Wait. Really? That ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. So it says, don't add to the word, don't remove from the word. You understand? Do exactly as we are commanded. He gave us law statutes and commandments. He says, apply that. You understand? Wait. Really? Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. Wait. Really? For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. Because they were worshipping idols, Baal. They were worshipping Baal of Peor. Go ahead. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you, this day. And to this day, 2021, 2022, you understand? It says, but ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you, this day. Okay, we know. Verse 5, come on. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me. Come on. That ye should do so in the land whither you go to possess it. So the Lord taught us statutes and judgment at the hand of Moses. Okay, that we must apply it so that what when we go in to possess the land that the Lord gave unto us, we may be able to possess the land forever. You, you understand? Ray, come on. Therefore, keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. You see that? Because the nation don't say that right now about us. He says, keep therefore and do them, meaning apply. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. So what makes us special, what makes us above all these nations, what gives us an advantage over them is what? Is the laws of God, is the laws that God gave unto us in the sight of the nations. Meaning the nations are going to see us applying God's laws. The nations are going to see us coming together, teaching our, our teaching the men, getting the men in order, getting the sisters in order, getting the children in order building our families, applying God's commandments, and strengthening the nation of Israel with the, God, with the spirit of the Lord. That's, what they, that, that's why it says, in the sight of the nations, meaning the nations will see this thing. Okay? You see that? He says, we shall hear all these statutes. How are they going to hear them? We're going to be on the streets. We're going to talk about them. Our conversation, in our music, when we start to push music out and so forth. You understand that? So all these, all these uh, programs that we, we want to now put together, you understand? The nations are going to hear and they're going to see us moving in the spirit of the Lord. That's what he's saying right there. And once we do that, he says, what? surely this what? Read that part of the verse again. Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. You see that? The nations are going to say that about us. When we begin to move, when we begin to submit ourselves into the roles that God gave us. Okay, great. 
for what nation is there so great? Who hath God so nigh unto them? Come on. As, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. You see what he's saying? He says, for what nation is so great who hath God so nigh unto them? There is no nation that has God nigh unto them. There is only one nation on this earth that has God so nigh unto them. And that's the 12 tribes of Israel. That's us. The so-called blacks, Bantus, Negroes, Hispanics, Native American, Indians. Guess what? We are that nation that we have God so nigh unto us. You understand? And we are able to do what? It says, um, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. Because whatever problems we have, the Lord says, okay, go into the book that I gave to your fathers and get yourself right. So we have cancer. Get that in Tobit, actually. Believe. Give me Tobit. Give me Tobit. Let me see something. It's not in my notes, but you know, Tobit mentioned something about that. Okay. Yes. Give me Tobit 4, verse 18. Read that. Tobit 4, verse 18. Tobit chapter 4, verse 18. Read. Ask counsel of all that are wise, and despise not any counsel that is profitable. He says, don't despise counsel that is, 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 uh, is profitable to you. Ask counsel of all that are wise, meaning those men that keep God's commandments, those sisters that keep God's commandments. Read on. Bless the Lord thy God always, mm -hmm. and desire of him that thy ways may be directed. Read. And that all thy paths and counsels may prosper. For every nation hath not counsel. Stop but right there. Hold on. For every nation hath not counsel. That's why Moses said what he said in there. Says, for what nation is what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them? There is no nation outside of the twelve tribes of Israel that has God so nigh unto them. That's why all these nations they've got idols that they worship. White people worship white. They worship Caesar Bourget, that gay that gay guy that they painted as the new image of Christ, which is not. The Chinese have Buddha. The East Indians have, have Krishna. You see that? So on and so forth. Um, so these are the nations, they worship idols. We don't. We worship the God of heaven and earth, the God of Israel, the one that created the heavens, the earth, the oceans, all of them. We worship that God because he's nigh unto us. We are his favorite. Okay? So now it says, for every nation has not counsel. That was as bless the Lord thy God always, and desire of him that thy ways may be directed, and all that and it says, and that all thy paths and counsels may prosper. Because the counsel that the Lord gave us is this Bible. You've got issues, mental issues, guess where you go? The scripts. You fast, you pray, you apply. You see that thing right there? So you've got uh, anger issues, you go to the scripts. The nations, they have to sit, sleep on a white man's couch, on an East Indian woman's couch. They, they are now they go for therapy. You understand? They have to sit with a psychiatrist. The Bible is your psychiatrist. Your Bible is, the Bible is your psychologist. You understand? Because that's the counsel that the Lord gave us. That's what gives us an advantage over all these nations on earth. That's what separates us from the nations because of what the Bible because we can get ourselves right because God, he left us a Bible that we can be able to get our minds right. That's why it says, you bless the Lord your God always because of that thing. Read that part again. For every nation has not what? For every nation has not counsel. Really? But the Lord himself giveth all good things and he humbleth whom he will. Really? As he will. Now therefore, my son, Remember my commandments, neither let them be put out of thy mind. You see that thing? Meaning, don't depart from these laws. Don't depart from the counsels of the Lord. Go back to Deuteronomy 4 now. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Now read verse 8. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 8. And what nation is there so great that had statutes? And judgments so righteous as all this law, which I said before you this day. You see that there's no nation. There says, What nation is there so great that has statues and judgments so righteous 
as all this law. None outside of God's, outside of the 12 tribes. There is no nation that has this, this, this privilege outside of the 12 tribes. I'm trying to show you how special we are to the law. What makes us special unto the most High God is his laws. Give me that in Deuteronomy 14. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verse 2. Wait. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Come on. And the Lord hath chosen thee to be a, pe a peculiar people unto himself. Mm -hmm. Above all the nations that are upon the earth. You see that thing? We are a peculiar people unto the Lord. Because of his law, the laws that he gave unto us. We are special. We are strange people upon this earth. When we begin to apply God's commandments, we're going to look strange. The type of decisions that we will make is going to seem like, you know what? You really hate us. No, no, no. Mm -mm. I'm keeping God's commandments. You must do the same because they also was given to you. You understand? But our people don't see it like that. You know why? Because they are, too, they are in love with their lust. They are in love with their sin. So when they have to think that in order for me to apply these laws, I have to, re I have to repent from my lust. I have to repent from these sins that I enjoy uh, that I enjoy committing. That's the reason why there's always resistance because of what? Because of sin. Our people love sin. So they, if they have to keep the commandments of the Lord, that means they have to stop sinning and now they have to apply God's laws to their lives. Our people want that day. That's why there's always a problem when we are on the streets. Whenever the law comes out, those that want to hear it, they will humble down and, 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 and listen. Those that have sinned, that those that want to not, those that don't want to repent from their sin, that's why there's always resistance. Because they don't want to what they don't want to repent. They are in love with their sin. They are one with their evil. Okay, that's why. So now go back. Go back to Romans. Romans chapter three, verse two again. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter three, verse two. Really? For what if some did not believe? Mm -hmm. So their unbelief make the faith of God without effect. You see what he said? No, 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 not verse 3, verse 2. Read verse 2 again. Excuse me, sir. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 2. Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. The reason why we have an advantage over the nations, the reason why um, we are better than them, the reason why we are above them, you understand, is because unto us was committed the oracles of God. Unto us was given God's laws. Give me Genesis 32 verse 27. Okay. Genesis 32 verse 27. And because we were given God's commandments, this is, the, this is now further the advantage that we have with the law. Watch this. Genesis 32 verse 27. Let's read it. The book of Genesis chapter 32 verse 27. Read and he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Jacob, come on. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but mm -hmm. Israel. For as, for as a prince shall th hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. You see what the Lord is saying right here? He, is he says, I'm going to change your name. You are no longer going to be called Jacob, but you are going to be called Israel. Because as a prince, has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. What is he saying? You are a prince that has power with God. We have power with the Lord. Because God gave us power to rule the nations. God gave us power to be better than all these nations on earth. You understand? And it says we have power with God. That's number one. Secondly, is as we have power over men on earth. We have power over all the nations and all, every bit of God's creation. The Lord says we have power because our name is Israel. We come from a, a man named Israel. You understand? And we have, we have an advantage. That's why it says, and has prevailed. We have an advantage over all nations on earth, every bit of God's creation, because we have power with God. The power that the Lord gave us Give me that in Psalm 68, verse 35. I love that verse right there. Read that for me. 
Psalm 68 verse 35. It's not in my notes. I want to go somewhere else, but I want to pull it anyway. Psalm 68 verse 35. Read that for me. The book of Psalms, chapter 68 verse 35. Pray. Oh God, thou art terrible out of thy holy places. Pray. The God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people. Mm -hmm. Blessed be God. You see what he's saying? We need to praise the Lord. Is that the God of Israel is he that gives us strength and power unto his people. That's why it says, for as a prince has thou power with God. We have power with the Lord. The power that God gave us, he gave us to do what? He gave us to rule the nations on earth. He gave us to govern ourselves, to be better than these nations by the way we live, the way we deal with each other. You understand? The way we eat, what we eat. You understand how we live? All of that, the most that God gave us, the power and the ways, infinite wisdom, he gave it unto us. We just need to tap into that. Get that in Romans 1.16. The Lord gave us power, brothers and sisters. He gave us power to do what? To change. Because that's, that, that's, where the, that's where the class is going. The power that God gave us first and foremost, before we can rule the nations, he gave us the power to change. To change the way we eat to change the way we dress, to change how we deal with our neighbors, to change the way we think, to change everything about ourselves. That's power right there. The nations don't have that privilege. The nations don't have that, they don't have that advantage over nobody. We do. You understand? Now read that. Romans 1, 16. The book of Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Go ahead. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Hmm. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Read. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. To the Jew first, that goes into the southern kingdom. The Greek goes into um, the Israelites that grew up in Greek customs. So it says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Never be ashamed of what this Bible says to you. Never be ashamed to apply God's commandments, worried about who's going to say what, how they're going to look at you, how they're going to treat you. You keep God's commandments. Never be ashamed. That's why it says, I shall not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Don't be ashamed. You understand? For it is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel of Christ is the power for us to get delivered. Before we can get delivered, we must change. You understand? That's the power, the power to change the way we think. That's the, the power to be born again. You understand? Watch this. Get that in the book of Acts. Okay, give me Acts 1. Give me Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Acts 1 verse 8. It's been a while since I read this. Read it. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Come on. But ye shall receive power mm -hmm. after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. You see that? He says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. The power that we're going to receive when the Holy Ghost come upon us, what is the Holy Ghost? God's laws. We're going to receive power. The power that we, we, we're going to receive now while we're still in captivity is the power to change. You understand? That's the power we receive now. The, the physical power that we're going to receive is when the Lord returns. Right now, the Lord is reviving us. As he is reviving us, he's giving us the power to change, the power to organize, the power to get our minds right, the power to be able to what? To, to build strong families, to, bring, to build strong marriages. That's the power that the Lord is giving us to us right now before he returns. You understand? Watch this. Give me Isaiah 44 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 1. The book of Isaiah Hello. chapter 44 verse 1. Yet now hear, O Jacob my servant, and Israel whom I have chosen. 
because we are the servants of the Lord. We are the we are God's chosen. We are his favorite. Okay, come on. Thus said the Lord that made thee mm -hmm. and formed thee from thy from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob. The Lord. Seven. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Because one thing that you need to understand is that a lot of the reason why you see our people don't want to change, you see men and women coming to the truth, they don't want to change, is because of fear. You are afraid of change. You don't want to change the way you think. You don't want to change the way you dress, the way you eat, the way we, you deal with your neighbor. You see that thing? It's because you are afraid of change. Because change requires pain. You're not going to change and you must not go through pain. If you want to change, because you changing, you changing for the better because the laws of God requires you to do so. Guess what? No pain, no gain. You have to go through the pain in order for that change to come. The reason why our people don't want to change within and without is because they don't want to go through the pain of change. You understand? Read that thing again. Verse 2. The book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verse 2. Read. Thus said the Lord that made thee, and from thee from the womb, which mm -hmm. will have thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jesurah, whom I have chosen. You see that thing? It says, Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jeshuran, whom I have chosen. Jeshuran means upright, the upright one. Jeshuran. Jeshuan. It says Jeshuan. That's what how we pronounce it in Hebrew because, well, obviously, that's just Ebonics. It says Jeshuran, whom I have chosen. So the Lord says, Fear not. Don't be afraid, Jacob. I got this. I got you. All you have to do, just apply, go through the pain. I will surely deliver you. That's what the Lord is promising us. You understand? And the promises that the Lord made, none of them shall fail. Get that in Isaiah 34, 16 real quick. Isaiah 34, 16. None of these, these uh, promises that the Lord gave unto us, none of them are going to fail. You understand? That's why it says, fear not. Okay? Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34, verse 16. Read. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Mm -hmm. No one of these shall fail. You see that? No one of these shall fail. That's a promise right there. The Lord is promising us that, listen, just go into this book. Go into the book that I gave to your fathers and read. Apply yourself. Because none of these words that are written, none of them are going to fail. Read. None shall want to mate. You're not going to want to make the Bible with any other book about God, like the Quran. Because the Quran is not even about God. It's about the Kaaba stone and Muhammad. Okay, go ahead. For my mouth it hath commanded, mm -hmm. and his spirit it hath gathered them. You see that thing? From the mouth of the Lord, these words were commanded. And the spirit of the Lord gathered the words that are written in this book at the mouth of the prophets. You understand? By the mouth of the, because the, the prophets, the, the one that spoke, I mean, the, the prophets are the one that wrote the words that the Lord spoke unto them. He says, none of these words are going to fail. Get that in First Kings. 856. 1 Kings chapter 8, which that says, none of these shall, no one of these shall fail. Okay. 1 Kings 8, verse 56. Let's read that. First book of Kings, chapter 8, verse 56. Go ahead. Blessed be the Lord, mm -hmm. that hath given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised. Stop right there. Because at this point, King Solomon was the king. So King Solomon was praising the Lord because what, we, what was, was written, it came to pass because we was in our rulership during this time. You understand? That's why it says, blessed be the Lord that had given rest unto his people Israel. Because at this point, we was in our glory. We were in our kingdom. The Lord was dealing with us. We, we rule all nations on earth. Right? According to all that he promised, they have not failed one word of all his good promise. You see that? It says they have what? It says they have not failed one word of all his good promise. Read. 
which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. You see that? No one of these shall fail. That's why it says, fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and Jeshua, whom I have chosen. Don't be afraid, Jacob. Don't be afraid. Watch this. Give me the, the reason why we are afraid this day. Get that in wisdom of Solomon 17. Because this fear that the reason why we are afraid is because we are being deceived. And what, what is deceived us is what? Because we are in the midst of sin, fear has deceived the black man. Fear has deceived the black woman. You understand? Because we're in the midst of sin. Now read that. Wisdom of Solomon 17 verse 12. Because King Solomon explained what fear really is. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 17 and verse 12. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 17 verse 12. Come on. For fear is nothing else but a betraying of the succors which reason of, of which reason offer it. You see what the you see what King Solomon is saying? It says, for fear is nothing else. Meaning fear doesn't exist. Fear is an illusion, it's a delusion. It says, fear is nothing else but a betray. Meaning what fear is a lying spirit. That's what King Solomon is teaching us here. It says, but a betraying of the succors. Succor means comfort. You understand? It, it fear betrays you with comfort because you're comfortable, you don't want. You don't want um, any, you don't want change. You're just comfortable in stagnation. You're comfortable in sin. You're comfortable when there's no progress because progress requires change. Progress requires pain because it's worth it. Under the right conditions. What is the right conditions? God's laws. You understand? So it says fear is nothing else but a betraying of the succors which reason is offered because fear will give you excuses. So what is fear? Fear is sin. Because excuses are sin. Now watch the next verse. Read verse 13. Come on. And the expectation from within, being less, counted the ignorance more than the cause which bringeth the torment. Now, this is that heavy verse right there. Read that verse again. Read it slow for me. Okay, come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17, verse 13. Read. And the expectation from within being less. Stop right there. It says, and the expectation from within being less. When you expect less of yourself, because that's what fear will do. Fear will make you to expect less of yourself. Because why? You have low self-esteem. You understand? You don't trust yourself. You understand? You don't trust. You don't trust. You don't trust in the law. Let me put it that way. You don't trust in God's laws. You don't trust in the Mosai, nor his son, nor the word that he gave unto us. Now it says, and the expectation from within your mind being less, you expect less of yourself. You see that thing? That's why you don't apply yourself because you're expecting less of yourself because you don't think you amount to anything. You don't believe that you're worth something. Because when you look at the image of, a, of the black man, the black woman, the nations treat us like crap. They disrespect us. They speak evil of us. They call us outside of our God-given names. They mock us. So now when you look at yourself, guess what? You look at yourself through the eyes of your oppressor. That's why he says, and the expectation from within being less. You have less expectation of yourself. You expect less of yourself. It says, counted the ignorance more than the cause which bringeth the torment. Now, that's some deep stuff right there. It says that because you expect less of yourself, is that it counts the ignorances more than the cause which bringeth the torment. So what brings the torment? What's bringing the torment? What's bringing the torment is the fact that you expect less of yourself. So it says the expectation from within being less now let's jump. It says, um, which bring up the torment. It says, because the ignorances, they count less. Because yes, says it counted the ignorances more. The ignorances is more than what you expect of yourself because you are ignorant of what? The reason why you are ignorant and the ignorance they count more is because of what? Is because you are ignorant of God's laws. 
There, because the ignorances are more, guess what? You come to both. What do I mean by that? Give me Wisdom of Solomon. Same, cha- same book, Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 22. I'm going to show you what, the, what King Solomon is saying in chapter 17. Because he's explaining the same thing. He's just going deeper in chapter 17. But watch this. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 22. Read that for me. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 22. Come on. Moreover, this was not enough for them. Mm-hmm. That they erred in the knowledge of God. Stop right there. The reason why you see we are afraid, you understand, and we comfort ourselves in the fear that we have because we expect less of ourselves. Why do we expect less of ourselves? Because the ignorance is they are counting more than the torment that is caused by expecting less of yourself. Now, it said, because of what? Because we erred in the knowledge of God. That's why. Next part of that verse. Go ahead. But whereas they live, in the great war of ignorance. Stop right there. Because we're living in the great war of ignorance as a nation. You live in the great war of ignorance. It's ignorance is a war against your mind. They, they say ignorance is bliss. No, ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is dangerous. Because when you are ignorant, you are easily deceived and manipulated. You always find yourself in trouble. You are always surprised. Why am I always in trouble? Because you're ignorant. You are living in the great war of ignorance because ignorance is not bliss. It's dangerous. Ignorance will get you killed. That's why he's saying right there, says, because they lived in the, whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance. Go ahead. Those so great plagues called their, called their peace. Called their peace. Because, because that war of ignorance is a plague that our people call peace. You understand? So now you're comfortable in oppression. You're comfortable in chaos. That's why you, you find it is like you, are, you, 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 you stay in the lockdown, but you don't have the desire to actually leave the, the lockdown. You say, ah, you know, who's ends are normal? He thinks he's better this one. He sees he's going to live in the suburbs. Listen, that's dumb as hell. Girls don't live in the ghettos. So we should never be comfortable that we're living in the ghettos. No. But we've been conditioned to believe that that's how it's supposed to be. So now, when you try to come out of the, the barrel, here comes the crabs. You understand? Our people just be trying to pull you down, to pull you down back into the barrel. That's where the word crabs in a barrel. You see a crab trying to climb out of the barrel? The rest of the crabs, they follow it, they grab it, they pull it right back. That's why. So go back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17, verse 13. Read that for me. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17, verse 13. Go ahead. And the expectation from within, being less, counteth the ignorance more than the cause which bringeth the torment. You see that thing? So the ignorances were more. Because the ignorances was more, and you lived in that great war of ignorance, and you call it peace, that's why now you expect less of yourself, because the ignorances, you, you call ignorance peace. You call war, you call war that is against your soul, you call that peace. Now your mind is tormented, you call that peace. That's normal. Because the mind has been what? The mind has been messed up. We've been played with the philosophies of men. We've been conditioned to be okay with mediocrity. You understand? So them days are over. The Lord gave us the power and the will to change. Now go back to Isaiah 44 verse 2 again. Okay. The book of Isaiah, chapter 44 verse 2. Come on. Thus said the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Mm-hmm. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jesura, whom I have chosen. You see what the Lord is saying? So the Lord is saying, listen, don't be afraid, because fear is not real. It's made up to what? To, to control us and to condition us. That's what, that's what fear exists, because the Lord didn't give us the spirit of fear. Now, 
Give me that team, Timothy. Okay. Give me that in, um, in Timothy. Give me 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. Okay. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Watch this. Second book of Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. Go ahead. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. God didn't give us the spirit of fear. The Lord did not give us the spirit of fear. The reason why as a nation we are fearful now is because we are not moving in the spirit of the Lord. We are moving in the spirit of our oppressor. The, the oppressor has traumatized the mind of the black man and the black woman so much that we don't believe we can do it without them. We don't believe that we can build our nation without them. It's called conditioning. When the Lord says, I've given you infinite wisdom, Israel, use that thing. Tap into that wisdom. You understand? Apply the laws. I've given you wisdom and power to change. You understand? To change you the way you think. Because that's where it begins. It begins up here in the mind. You understand? Read that thing again, verse 7. Second book of Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. Wait. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You see that thing? He, gave us, he did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power. The power to do what? In captivity right now, the Lord gave us the power to change our thinking. Because it begins up here in the mind, in your spirit. That's where it begins. Then once you have the, yeah, then once you start to make changes based on the power, which is the laws of God that was given to us, guess what? We're going to have the spirit of love, to love your neighbor as yourself, to go out there and wake up your people. Because now you, have, you use the power that God gave us, which is his commandments, to change. And then it says, and of a sound mind. Now you have a sound mind. You have sense in your mind. You understand? So the spirit of Christ is, is gives us the spirit, is, is the power to change, to become another man. That's the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ is the spirit of change. You understand? That's the spirit of Christ right there. So God gave us the spirit to do what? To change. When you come into this truth, you have to now deal with yourself. And it begins with your spirit. Now let's deal with the first point. The first change that you must do is your spiritual life. You must change your spiritual life. That's the power that God gave us. God gave us to change. The first point to change, change is what? Your spiritual life. Your spiritual life must change. Watch this. Give me that in 2nd Ezra 14, 34. God gave us the spirit, the spirit to change. You understand? Your spirit must change when you come into this truth. Second Esther 14, verse 34. We what you got. Come on. Second book of Esther, chapter 14, verse 34. Read. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding mm -hmm. and reform your hearts. And do what? And reform your hearts. And reform your hearts. Come on. You shall be kept alive. Mm -hmm. And after death, you shall obtain mercy. So I want to deal with that verse right there, okay? Because we're dealing with point number one. The first point is to change your spiritual life. You understand? So Ezra here is giving us the blueprint on how to do so in the spirit of Christ. Read that verse again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 14, verse 34. Verse 34. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if so be that you subdue your own understanding, Stop right there. It says, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding. What does it mean to subdue? Because we don't use that word as often. To subdue your own understanding. Let's get some definitions, okay? Let's get the definition of the word subdue. What does that mean? That's not a regular Negro word. So let's, let's get some definitions of that. Read that definition, subdue. Come on. Definition of subdue. Mm -hmm. Verb. Overcome. Uh -huh. Overcome, quieten, or bring under control. A feeling or person. So now, you see what the word subdue means? It says overcome, quieten, 
bring under control a feeling. You see, that's one of the red flags right there that must be subdued. Feeling or person meaning yourself. Now watch this. Let's get some synonyms, okay? There's the one I want up in here. Watch this. Right there. Read that. Similar. Mm -hmm. Suppress. Do what? Suppress. So the word subdue also means to suppress. Okay, let's go in there. Let's see what it means. Suppress. Okay. Um, read that. The definition of suppress. Mm -hmm. uh, forcibly put an end to. You see what it means to suppress? To suppress means, which is to subdue, means to forcibly put an end to. You see what the Bible is saying? Now, I want you to replace forcibly put, I want you to replace subdue with forcibly put to an end to. Make sense? Yes, sir. You understand what I'm saying? So, yes, in the scriptures, it says, if the, it says, therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understand. So you're going to replace the word subdue with forcibly put to put an end to. Now read that. Therefore, the second book of Esther, chapter 14, verse 34. Go ahead. Therefore, if so be that you will forcibly put an end to your own understanding. You see that? If you will forcibly put an end to your own understanding, Meaning the Lord said, I don't want your own understanding when, it, when you come into this truth. So what the, where, where does that deal? It deals with your spirit. It deals with your mind. That's why you, it says you must, when you're forcing something, it means you're putting all the effort to get rid of it. The Lord says you must go above and beyond to forcibly put an end to your own understanding because, listen, the the, the most of God's laws cannot be mixed with the philosophies that you've learned in the world. Mm -mm. The two cannot exist in the same spirit. No. They cannot occupy the same space at the same time. One must occupy, the other one must be kicked out. Forcibly put an end to it. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying right there. That's some heavy stuff right there. That's beautiful. You understand? That's beautiful right there. Okay, go back to the definition of suppress again. The definition of suppress, verb, mm -hmm. forcibly put an, an end to. Forcibly put an end to. That's why even in similar words, you see that? It says what? Subdue, defeat, conquer, vanquish, repress, crush, put down, extinguish, overpower, squash, crack down on. You see that thing? Terminate, halt, arrest, stop. Discontinue, end, put out, put an end to. It's all saying the same thing. That's what, that's what it means to suppress. You understand? Now watch this. Read the verse again. Second Esther. Okay, 14 verse 34. Second book of Esther, chapter 14 verse 34. Come on. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding mm -hmm. and reform your hearts. Stop right there. And do what? And reform your hearts. And reform your hearts. Reform your hearts. Let's get the definition of the word reform. Okay. That's it right there. That's it right there. Now read that definition. Reform. The definition of reform. Mm -hmm. Verb. Make changes in something, especially an institution or practice, in mm -hmm. order to improve. In, in order to do what? In order to improve it. You see what it's saying? The word the reform means to make changes. To make changes in order to improve your way, the way you think. You understand? That's why it says subdue, meaning put an end to your own understanding and reform your heart, meaning make changes in your mind, your spirit. Be born again. You start with your spirit. Your spiritual life must be in order. That's the first order of business. Okay, now let's get some more. Read that. The similar words? Similar. Improve. 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 But before we get that, right, 
Hmm. Improve. Improve. Okay, read that. Read improve again. Similar. Improve. Mm -hmm. Improve. Let's go into that. Improve. Mm. Let's see. Read that. The definition of improve. The definition of improve. Where? Verb. Make or become better. Mm -hmm. You see that? Make or become better. So when it says reform your hearts, meaning make your mind better than what it is now. Because what it is now is full of garbage. It's full of, the, it's full of demons. You understand? The law says, subdue your own understanding, meaning put an end to your own understanding and make your mind better. Reform your heart. Reform your thinking. You see that thing? That's what he's saying right there. Now watch this. Yes. Now read the upgrade. Reform, upgrade, improve, it's all synonymous. Now read that. The definition of upgrade. upgrade. Come on, Verb. the definition of upgrade. Read. The definition of upgrade. Verb. Raise something to a higher standard. Stop right there. Stop right there. Read that thing again. The definition of upgrade. Verb. Mm -hmm. Raise something to a higher standard. Stop right there. That's all I want. Raise something to a higher standard. Meaning your mind must be raised up to a higher standard of thinking. Because right now, we don't have God's commandments. We are, we are what? We have a low standard of thinking. That's why we produce low standard things. Because our mind is not right. The spirit is not correct. The spirit has not been reformed yet. We have not subdued our own understanding. We have not put an end to our own understanding. You understand? So the Lord says, let, let it go, okay, and reform your hearts. Meaning what? You need to raise your mind up to a higher standard of thinking, of operation. That's what the Lord is saying to us right there. Now, that's some heavy stuff. That's beautiful right there. Okay? Watch this. Hmm. No, that's it, right? That's it, John. Let's go back. Okay, watch this. Okay, oh, please. Now, read that. Correct. Read the definition of correct. This is synonymous with reform. Read. The definition of correct. Mm -hmm. Adjective. Come on. Free from error. What? Free from error. Free from error, meaning free from sin. That's what the error goes into. That's a biblical word. Error goes into sin. Read. Right? In accordance with fact or truth. In accordance with the Bible. The Bible is a fact. The Bible is the only truth on this earth. So it says free from sin in accordance with the fact or truth that is found in God's laws. In the Holy Bible. So that's what it means to reform your house, to reform your thinking. Okay, now watch this. Let's go back. You know what? Let me see something. Read that definition. Definition of correct. Mm -hmm. Put right an error or fault. You see that thing? Put right. Meaning get your mind right. That's what the Lord is teaching us. That's what he's saying here. He's saying there in essence. Let's go back now. Okay. Let's get some more synonyms of this. Now, I like that word right there. Read that word. Similar. Mm -hmm. Transform. What? Transform. 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 Let's click there. These are biblical words. Okay. Hmm. Now read that. The definition of transform. Verb, Come on. Make a marked change in the form, nature, or appearance of. You see what it's saying? It says make a marked change. Meaning what? A noticeable change in the form, 
the way in which it's formed, that means that must change. The nature of it must also change. The appearance of it must also change. That's what the Lord is saying here in 2 Corinthians 14. So when it says reform your heart, it says transform, correct, improve. You see that? That's what he's saying right there. Improve, correct, transform. That's what the Lord is teaching us that we must do. You understand? When it says reform your heart. Read the verse again. 2 Corinthians 14 verse 34. 2 Corinthians 14 verse 34. Come on. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding and reform mm -hmm. your hearts. You see that? And reform your hearts. Reform your hearts. Now watch this. Let's go back. Okay, let's go back to the definition of reform. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. Read that word now. Mm, that's some beautiful stuff right there. Read that. Convert. No, no, the definition again. Is that the definition, the definition of what? Uh, Verb. Uh, Make changes in something, especially an institution or practice, in order to improve it. So, when they re to reform, you need to make changes in order to improve the current state of that system. In this context, the current state of your of our minds, it must be what we must make changes to it, according to what he's gonna tell you when we go into the scripts in order to improve it. Because right now it's not improved. You understand? We need to raise ourselves up to a higher standard of what a higher standard of thinking that takes place in your spirit, in your mind. Okay. Now let's get some similar words. Read that. Similar. Convert. Do what? Convert. What's that word? Convert. Convert. Okay, let's go into that. Convert. Let's get the definition of the word convert. Now, I love this thing right here. This definition, that's beautiful. Now, read that. Convert. Come on. The definition of convert. Verb. Mm -hmm. Change the form, character. Or function of something. Now that's heavy right there. Woo, that's beautiful right there. It says change the form. Okay. Change the form, character, or function of something. Your mind. Remember it says reform your hearts. So this all must take place in your mind, in your spirit. You must change the form of your mind. You must change the character of your mind. You must change the function of your mind. The way your mind functions needs to change because the way that is functioning right now, it's all wrong. That's what the Lord is saying to us. You understand? Now read 2nd Esther 14, verse 34 again. 2nd book of Esther, chapter 14, verse 34. Come on. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding mm -hmm. and reform your hearts, when? ye shall be kept alive. You shall be kept alive. Come on. And after death, you shall obtain mercy. So he says, you shall be kept alive. So in order for you to be kept alive, you understand? Guess what you need to do? You must, we must subdue our own understanding. We must reform our hearts. Then we are going to be kept alive. Because remember, to, to reform means to convert. What converts us so that we can be kept alive? Get that in Psalms 19 now. Psalms 19 verse 7. Watch this. Book of Psalms, chapter 19 verse 7. Go ahead. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting mm -hmm. the soul. Converting the what? Converting the soul. So the laws of God is perfect. God's commandments, they are perfect, okay? And that's why the Moses God has given us the laws so that we can what? We can convert our minds. We can reform our minds. You understand? It says converting the soul. The only thing that can set us, that, that can raise us up to a high standard of 
The high standard of thinking is God's laws. It's not science. It's not geography. It's not mathematics. Mm -mm. You understand? It's not physics. It's not uh, medicine. No, 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 no. It's God's laws. It's not engineering. Engineering is not going to raise you up to a higher standard of thinking. No. But because that's what the world has taught us. None of that is going to raise us up as a nation to a higher standard of thinking so we can rule the earth. No. Read the part again, verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Wait. The law of the Lord is perfect. Come on. Converting the soul. Converting the soul. God's commandments is what's going to what was going to reform our hearts so that we can raise be raised up to a higher standard of thinking. Wait. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Mm -hmm. Making wise the simple. You see that thing? The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. Because if you're not reformed, your mind is not reformed according to God's laws, you will remain simple. You understand? You will remain simple and void of understanding. That's why the nations, they keep pushing science towards us. They keep pushing everything else but God's laws. That's why as a nation, we're simple right now. You understand? We are void of understanding because we are not keeping God's commandments as a nation. So as a nation, we are void of counsel. So now it's time the Lord is commanding us, says what? Go back to 2nd Exodus 14, 34. I want this thing to marinate in the head. It must hit that nabi. Okay? We watch God. 2nd book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 34. Go ahead. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding mm -hmm. and reform your hearts, More. ye shall be kept alive, and after death ye shall obtain mercy. You see what the Lord is saying? Ye shall be kept alive, because God's laws, when you convert by God's commandments, guess what? It says you are going to be kept alive. Get that in Proverbs 7, Proverbs 7 verse 2. You shall be kept alive. Okay? Watch this. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 2. Read. Keep my commandments and live. Read. And my law as the apple of thine eye. You see that thing? What gonna, what's going to... The reason why it says he shall be kept alive is because we're keeping God's commandments. You keep God's laws, you will be kept alive. And then after death, when meaning when the missiles hit, when the Lord returns, it says you shall obtain mercy because you're going to get delivered because of the Lord's mercy because he kept you alive because you kept his laws. You see that thing? You endured unto the end. You didn't give up. You didn't give in. You see that thing right there? That's what the Lord is teaching us right there. Now give me the book of Ephesians, okay? Give me Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 23. Go ahead. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You see what it's saying? That's the same thing that Ezra said. It says, and be renewed in the spirit of of your mind because your mind is the spirit that must be renewed your mind is the spirit that must be reformed your mind is the spirit that must what that must subdue its own understanding everything that we learned in this society wherever we are scattered through colonization uh forced migration you understand slave trades and law and so forth the lord says our minds we must subdue everything that our oppressors taught us in the land of our captivity and reform our hearts. That's how we are going to be renewed in the spirit of our minds. God's laws is the only way we are going to be renewed in the spirit. That's why when you come into this truth, your spirit, you must get your mind right. Your spiritual life must be on point. That's your first focus when you first come in. Okay? Read on, verse 24. Before you get verse 24, get Romans 12, verse 2. Romans 12, verse 2. Of Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Go ahead. And be not conformed to this world. Be not what? But 
and be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world, read on. But be ye transformed by the renewing mm -hmm. of your mind. Stop right there. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What does it mean to conform? Let's get the definition of the word conform. Okay. Let's see what it means. Now read that. The definition of the word conform. Okay. Wait. The definition of conform. Mm -hmm. Verb. Comply Come with rules, standards, or laws. Read that part again. The definition of conform. Ru verb. Comply with rules, standards, or laws. It says comply with rules, standards, or laws, right? You must get to conform means to comply with rules, standards, or laws. Now, let's get some examples because the Apostle Paul was writing to the Israelites that were scattered in Rome. You understand? They were following Roman, Greek and Roman customs because when the Greeks, when the Romans took over, they, they, they swallowed the Greeks. That's why it's called Greco-Roman Empire. Okay? Now watch this. Give me second Maccabees. I'm going to give an example of conforming. Okay? This conforming here, the, the Apostle Paul was saying, we must not conform to this world. Which world? The world of Rome during that time. That's the world, that's the world he was talking about. Today is the world of America called Babylon the Great in the Bible. He said, don't conform to the world of America because America runs the earth. So the way the world operates is because of how America has set it up. You understand? Now, read that. Second Maccabees 6 verse 6. Let me show you what we did when we were in under the Greeks captivity. The Greek captivity. This is what happened to us. Okay, read that. Second book of Maccabees chapter 6 verse 6. Read. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts mm -hmm. or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So it was a Greek law for us to denounce our, our nationality. You understand? No, also to and, and to denounce our laws. You couldn't profess yourself that you was a Jew under the Greeks. It was against Greek law. You understand? We couldn't observe our high holidays. We couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't observe the Sabbath. You understand? So that's what the Greeks did. The Greeks took away our nationality. They took away our culture. You understand? And they took away us observing our high holidays. During the time that we, they were ruling. You understand? Read on. Verse 7, come on. Right. And in the day of the king's birth, every month they were brought, they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. So now it says during the time of the king's birth, meaning what? The king's birthday. So when, when the Greeks were celebrating their birthdays, it says we, the children of Israel, were brought by bitter constraint because they forced us to eat, they forced us to eat of their sacrifices, meaning what on their birthdays. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, Bacchus is a what? Bacchus is a sex god. That's what Bacchus is. Bacchus is a sex god, the god of sex, the god of wine, and orgies. That's who Bacchus is. Today in, the, in these last days, they call us, they call it Bacana, Labor Day Parade. Where our sisters in Jamaica, they be going around, sleeping around with men they've never met. You understand? That's why they have multiple babies. They don't know who the father is. It's a custom that they're keeping now. You understand? So it says, we were, we were what? We were forced to celebrate Bacchus. You understand? It says the Jews were compelled, meaning we were forced to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. Go ahead. Verse 8. Read. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen. Mm -hmm. 
by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews. Against the Jews. So they put it they put out a decree against us because they for they said, listen, you must denounce your nationality, you must denounce your culture, don't celebrate your feast days. You're gonna celebrate ours now. They did it by force, right? That they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. So now, now we started to partake in their sacrifices. Watch the next verse. Come on. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles, should whoso would not what? And whoso would not conform themselves, conform, conform, conform. Whoso would not conform. That's the word. That's the same thing that the Apostle Paul said. So when he says, be not conformed to this world, what is he talking about? He was talking about the world of Rome. So, but remember, the Romans, they took their culture from the Greeks. You understand? So, guess what? What the Greeks was doing, the Romans was doing. So, I'm showing you what they forced us to do in under the Greeks. And the same thing they forced us to do under the Romans. So we had to conform ourselves to the customs of the Greeks and the Romans. You understand? We conformed ourselves to Greco-Roman culture. That's what we're doing. That's what our people are doing today. That's why they celebrate birthdays, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, uh, Father's Day, New Year's, Christmas, all of which is pagan customs. You understand? Read that again, verse 9. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 9. Mm -hmm. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Come on. Then might a man have seen the present misery. You see what he's saying? So if we do not conform them ourselves to the manners of the Gentiles, who's the Gentiles? The Greeks. The Gentiles, yes, talk about the Greeks. It says should be put to death because they were killing our fathers and mothers if we do not conform. Now watch this. Give me first Maccabees 141. First Maccabees 141, because the same customs that the Greeks was practicing is the same customs that the Romans was practicing. First Maccabees 141. Watch this. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 41. Wait. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. That all should be one people. So this is Antiochus the fourth. He wrote to his whole kingdom that, listen, everybody should be one people. This is the birth of democracy right here in Athens. Go ahead. And everyone should leave his laws. So remember, who... The, the only people uh, during the time of the Greeks that had laws was who? The Israelites. Our forefathers, it was us. So now it says that everyone should leave his laws. The first people to deal with is us because we had laws. The other nations, they just follow. They just have their own, you know, wicked traditions, worshipping their own idols and so forth. But the people, the first people that they were dealing with, they were forcing to, uh, to leave their laws is us. Then the other nations that are just between Esau and Jacob. Well, so all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. You see that? All the heathen, they agreed according to the commandment of the king. The heathen agreed that everyone should leave his laws, meaning us, and they also agreed to leave their laws as well. Read. Really? Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. You see that? Many also of our people, we consented, meaning we agreed, we conformed, like the Apostle Paul is saying, be not conformed to this world, that world of Rome. Today is the world of the extension of ancient Rome, which is America, Babylon the Great, the Great Hall. Go ahead. And sacrificed unto idols mm -hmm. and profaned the Sabbath. You see that? We started sacrificing unto idols during the time of the Greeks and we profaned the Sabbath. We are no longer observing the law of the Sabbath like our people today they are doing. They are not observing the Sabbath day. That's why when we go to camp, 
We teach our people to observe the Sabbath according to as it is written. You understand? So now watch this. Now let's get the definition because I'm going to show you what time period was this called. Okay. I'm going to show you what time period was this called. Watch this. Okay, let me share my screen real quick so we can see. Okay, read that. Read the definition, read that. The definition of assimilation. Mm -hmm. Noun. Read. The process of taking in and fully understanding information or ideas. So now he's starting to get clever. Now he's starting to be slick using Google. He's changing the definitions up. But what's the grayed out part? Because that's the part really that they are hiding. That's why it's grayed out. Read that. The assimilation of the knowledge of the Greeks. You see that? Why would he use this definition at the bottom of but here on the, you see this definition right here is, is what? Is in bold. You can see, but he's not saying anything about the Greeks. He just saying the process of taking in and fully understanding information or ideas. But at the bottom, he says the assimilation of the knowledge of the Greeks. And you see what he said? You see what Esau's doing? He's hiding stuff. You understand? Watch this. Now read that. So we were assimilating, we assimilated, it will, we got assimilated into Greek culture. What was that period called? Now read this. Read the definition that we, that we are seeing here. Read that. The definition of Hellenism. Mm -hmm. Noun. The national character or culture of Greece, especially mm -hmm. ancient Greece. You see that thing? The national character or culture of Greece especially ancient Greece. Because who took the national character or culture of Greece? The Romans did. America did that. Europe has done that. You understand? Now the world is following them. But the people that they have in captivity is us, that they destroyed us completely. They stripped us of our, nation, our heritage, our culture, our nationality, everything. Now read that. You know what? Hmm. Read, read. Read what, what, what Hel the objective of Hellenism was. Read that. The repudiation of Hellenism in Jerusalem. The repudiation of Hellenism in Jerusalem. Let's get the definition of repudiation because that's not a regular Negro way. Let's see if they will give us the definition. Mm. Okay, read that. The definition of repudiation. Now, rejection of a proposal or idea. Rejection of a proposal or idea. Read that. Denial of the truth or validity of something. Now, let's go back. Okay, now read that again. Definition of Hellenism. Now, the repudiation of Hellenism in Jerusalem. Because there were those of our forefathers that rejected Hellenism. There are those of our forefathers that rejected. That's why it says the repudiation of Hellenism in Jerusalem. That goes into what? The, 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 the time of the Maccabees. You understand? Marathayev and his sons. Okay, now read that. The study or imitation of ancient Greek culture. That is right there. The study or imitation of ancient Greek culture. So, with, uh, as, an, as our people that are not in the truth, they study, they imitate the ancient they, they, they study and imitate ancient Greek culture. During the time of Rome, we did the same thing. 
Now under America, Babylon the Great, our people are doing the same thing too in these last days. So the Apostle Paul was teaching us, the listen, do not conform to this world because we were conforming to the what? Our forefathers during the time of the Greeks, they conformed to what? To Hellenistic ideas. Those that what? Those that did not put up a fight, those that were okay with it. You understand? Now, let's go back. Go back to um, um, Romans 12, verse 2 again. The book of Romans, the 12, verse 2. Wait. And be not conformed to this world. Come on. But be transformed by the, by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that. Wait. Right. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see what the Bible is saying? Is that be not conformed to this world. Meaning what? Do not follow Greek culture, ancient Greek culture, Roman culture, American culture. He said, don't follow that. You understand? Because when we conform to this world, which is that world back then, which is the extension of the new, extension of the new world today that we're living in, the world of Babylon the Great, America, it says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You change your thinking. You subdue your own understanding and reform your heart. You understand? Wait. It says that you may what? That you may prove what that is you may what? good. That you, that you may prove. That you may prove. You may prove. You may prove what is that good. So how do you prove that which is good? Watch this. Give me the book of First Thessalonians 5.21 that you may prove that which is good. Prove that which is good. Watch this. First Thessalonians 5 is 21. Come on. First book of Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 21. Come on. Prove all things. Mm -hmm. Hold fast that which is good. You see that in order for you to prove all things that are written in this Bible, you must hold fast to that which is good. Give me that in uh, 1 Timothy 1, verse 8. We must prove that which is good. How? We must hold fast. We must prove all things by holding fast to that which is good, meaning hold on to that which is good. Get that in 1 Timothy 1, verse, um, verse 8 real quick for me. First book of Timothy, chapter 1, verse 8. Come on. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. You see that? But we know that the law is good. We know the law is good if a man use it lawfully. So the law is good. So when it says prove what is that good, meaning prove that the law is good. How? You apply it. You must prove that the law is good by applying it. So in order for you to prove that the law is good by applying it, the first thing you must do is what? Get that in 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5. This is how you prove that the law is good. The first thing that you must do is this right here. Every man and woman, you must do this. Okay? Second book of Corinthians, chapter 13 verse 5. Go ahead. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Mm -hmm. Prove your own selves. You see that? The first thing that you must do in order for you to prove that the law is good, you must first examine yourself. What am I lacking? What is my what is what are my shortcomings? What do I need to deal with in order to for me to get my mind right, to get my spiritual right, my spiritual life correct? You understand? You must examine. You must look at the man in the mirror, look at the woman in the mirror, and see. The, 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 the spots in your face. You understand? You see that your body, you are shapeless. So that means there's work to do. You understand? Your breath stinks. That means your hygiene is not good. I'm just giving examples here. Okay? So you must sit down now and examine. Okay, let me get myself right. I know I stink. I don't bath. You understand? I don't wash my behind. Guess what? You sit down and examine that. So, okay, I need to deal with this. I need to change. And you understand, I need to start to be more hygienic. That's how you examine. That's why that's what 
That's what it means to prove that the law is good. When you sit down and examine, and so you can get rid of, you, can, you start to repent. That's what he's going into. He's, he's, that's what he's making, he's, he's making reference to. Now, give me that in Isaiah 42, 21. Once you prove that the law is good by applying it through self-examination, here's what's going to happen next. Get Isaiah 42, 21. Okay, read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 21. Great. Right. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness. The, the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 21. Come on. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness' sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. You see that? He will magnify the law and make it honorable. So when Christ walked the earth, he magnified the law. He made it honorable. Likewise, as we follow after the footsteps of our Lord and Savior, we also must magnify the law and make it honorable. You understand? That's why you prove that the law is good. Because now, you're, 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 you, you, the, the, the things that you used to do, you're not doing those things anymore. Because now your spirit is changing. Your spirit, your mind, because your mind is a spirit, now is changing. You started to get your mind right. You understand? Get Ephesians now, 4 verse 24. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4 verse 24. Read. Right. And that you put on the new man. You do what? And that you put on the new man. Now you put on the new man because you are renewed in the spirit of your mind. Your spirit, your spirit now is no longer conforming to the what? To the to the evils of this world. You are no longer conforming. You are no longer partaking. Okay. Read. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You see that thing? Now your mind is going to be after the most high God. Okay, read verse 25. Wherefore, putting away lying, mm -hmm. speak every man truth with his neighbor. Wait. For we are members one of another. You see what he's saying? So he says we must put away lying. Okay, because that's the law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. Now, why? Because now you are a new man. You are renewed in the spirit of your mind. You understand? It's just we are members of one another. This where we represent the body of Christ. Now watch this. Give me 2 Corinthians 5 17. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 17. Wait. Right. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, mm -hmm. he is a new creature. Come on. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You see that thing? So now you are you are a new creature now that you are under Christ. Because now you are what? You are getting your mind right. You are getting your spiritual life in order. So you, you understand that you are a new creature now. All, all those things, the old man is all the things that you used to do as that old man. They are all passed away because you're repenting. Behold, all things are become new. Your spirit is new now. You have a new spirit now so that your spiritual life can be healthy. You understand that? Now watch this. First, first, first Samuel 10 verse 6. First Samuel chapter 10 verse 6. Read that. First book of Samuel chapter 10 verse 6. Come on. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt prophesy with them and shalt be turned into another man. You see what? This was talking about Saul now. You understand? He says, this, the Lord was telling him, listen, the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee and thou shalt prophesy with them, with the prophets, and shall be turned into another man. That's what this walk is about. When you come in Israel, you'll be turned into another man. Why? Because the spirit of the Lord will come upon you because you are repenting. So now your mind, because it's a spirit, now is transforming. You stop being a simp. You stop being a bum. You stop being a Jezebel. You stop being a whore that you was in the world. You stop being a, that big, big black, big black, mm, 
big mouth black woman with black guns, okay? You stop being that sister. You understand? You Now you have a quiet and a mixed spirit because now the Lord is transforming your spirit. You understand? You stop being that brother that used to smoke. You stop being that homemonger. You understand? You're getting your mind right. You stop hanging around in the corner, not knowing what you're supposed to do with yourself. You get a job. You see those type of things. You're getting your spirit right. You're starting to see that these things that you used to do, they are all against God's commandments. You understand? Now watch this. Give me second Genesis 14, 13. Second book of Esther, chapter 14, verse 13. Great. Now therefore set thine house in order. Stop right there. Now therefore set your house in order, your spiritual house. You must set your spiritual house in order. Jump down to verse 14 now. Watch this. Come on. Second book of Esther, chapter 14, verse 14. Read. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. Mm. Cast away the burdens of men. Put off now the weak nature. You see what the Bible is saying? When you set your house in order, you're going to let go of your mortal thoughts. Remember what it says. It says what? Subdue your own understanding and reform your heart. You're not going to have those, those mortal thoughts, those weak thoughts. Because the mortal thoughts, watch this. Give me Wisdom of Solomon 9, 14 real quick. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 14. Okay. It says, let go from thee mortal thoughts. Nine verse 14. Chapter 9, verse 14. Wait. Right? For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. You see that? The thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Yeah, right now we are mortal. Our bodies are mortal. Our mind, though, the Lord says, you must transform it. Before I can give you that immortal body, you must transform your mind and conform to this Bible, not to the world, but to this Bible. That's why he says the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Meaning what? You're full of misery and pain. You understand? Really? And our devices are but uncertain. Because guess what? We, we come up with plans. They don't work out because our devices are uncertain because our thoughts, you understand? They don't conform to, the, to this Bible. Our thoughts is the thoughts of our oppressor. You understand? So we have miserable thoughts. The Lord says you must let go of those miserable thoughts because they make you weak. You understand? So go back to wisdom, uh, 2 Ezra 14, verse 14 again. 2 Book of Ezra, chapter 14, verse 14. Come on. Let go from thee, mortal thoughts. Mm -hmm. Cast away the burdens of man. Wait. Right. Put off now the weak nature. Those mortal thoughts, guess what? They, were, they carry the burdens of men. The Lord says, put off now the weak nature. Because those, the mortal thoughts, the burdens of men, they make your mind to be weak. Now when your mind is weak, you're going to live in the great war of ignorance. You understand? You start to have, you, you, you have the spirit of fear. More importantly, you will have low self-esteem. That's not the spirit that the Lord gave us. The Lord didn't give us the spirit to have a low self-esteem. That's the spirit of Satan. Now when you come in, this is for both men and women. Guess what? You need to get your mind right. You apply. You believe what the Bible is saying. You apply it. You're going to show your belief by your application. Okay? Now, second, first Esther 426. I'm going to give an example with the brothers. Okay? Because in the world, you used to be a simp. You come in Israel, you cannot remain a simp. You must change your simp ways. Watch this. First Esther 4, verse 26. I'll give an example with this. Come on. First book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 26. Come on. Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women mm. and become servants for their sex. He says, many have run out of their wits for women, meaning they've lost their damn minds because of a woman. And now you've become a servant to that woman. You forgot the law that says, you the head. The woman, she's, she's created to glorify you. You are created in the image of God. She's created in your image and to glorify you. You don't understand that. You don't apply that. You don't believe it. So now 
even in the truth, now guess what? You run off, you, you, you lose your mind because of a woman. Okay, come on, verse 27. Many also have perished, have erred, and sinned for women. You see that? Many have died, have erred, they've erred in the faith, they've broken the law for women. Because you can't, you, in the world, a sister just smiles at you, a sister just greets you, or the sister speaks nice to you, all of a sudden, you're willing to drop everything to run after the sister. Could the sister come smile? The sister smiles, that means you know there's something going on there. You see, that's chemistry. No, you simp, just be quiet. There's nothing going on. Some of you, you have such a low, low self-esteem that a sister just smiles at you. Now, all of a sudden, you want to do anything and everything to please the sister. No, no, that's a simp move. When you come in Israel, you don't do that. You please the Lord. She pleases you. You see that thing? That's how. That, that's the order. We please the Lord. That's the order right there. Watch this. Now, jump down to verse, uh, verse 30. Okay. First book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 30. Go ahead. And taking the crown from the king's head and setting it upon her own head, Mm. She also struck the king with her left hand. Look at the level of disrespect that this woman, the king's concubine, had for the king. She took the crown from the king's head because we're the king. So a sister, you come in, if the sister comes in Israel, big booty, pretty face, she's dumb as a rock. You run after the sister because you are a simp. Guess what she's going to do? She's going to take your crown, black man. She's going to take your crown, you Israelite man, you prince. She's going to take your crown. You understand? And she will put it on her own head and smack you on the face. And you know what? She, she may not smack you in the face. Oh, no. She knows how to deal with you. She knows if she just, she, 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 she works you out the right way in the bedroom because you are simple. Guess what? She will take away your crown. You lose the kingdom because of that thing. You betray the man that you go to war with for a coochie. Yeah, simple. So when you come in Israel, guess what? Your spirit got to change. You have to shake off that same spirit. You understand? You must shake it off. Okay, watch this. Now, give me the book of Sirach 36 verse 21. I'm giving an example for the sisters as well. Okay, Sirach chapter 36 verse 21. Ecclesiasticus chapter 36, verse 21. Really? A woman will receive every man, yet is one daughter better than another. You see what the Bible is saying? A woman is as a woman will receive every man. This type of sister right here, this is a desperate sister. This is a sister that has a loss of esteem. It says she will receive every man into her house between her legs. She will do that. It says, yet is one daughter better than the other. The daughter that is better than this sister that is receiving every man into our house is the daughter that follows counsel, understand why the Lord called her. She will get her mind right. She will correct her spirit to get rid of that low self-esteem. To get rid of that, you know what? That sister that has a low self-esteem, you understand? Because some brothers, they look for those type of sisters. They look for sisters that have low self-esteem, they look for sisters that are, you know, they are timid, they are vulnerable. They look for those type of sisters. He says, I want that one right there. That's the one I want to prove. That's the one that I want to marry. Not because he wants to grow old with the sister. No, because he will be, he, he will, he will be able to manipulate the sister and abuse the sister. Verbally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally, and financially too. You understand? It's usually these short brothers that do stuff like that. So you short brothers, you better examine yourself. Now watch this. Um, give me the book of 2 Timothy 3 verse 5. Watch this. Mm. 2 Timothy 3 verse 5. Read what you got. And because, guess what? Because the sister has a low self-esteem, every brother that just approaches unto her, she just says, she, you, such, you have such a low self-esteem, a brother talks to you in the truth, you all of a sudden you say, now you start to do what? 
you, anything can just happen with you. The brother will just have to say the right things, and guess what? She will, he will drop your panties. I'm telling you right now. So stay in the spirit. Give me that in Second Timothy three verse five. Read that. Second book of Timothy chapter three verse five. Go ahead. Having a form of godliness, mm -hmm. but denying the power thereof. Come on. From such turn away. So the Lord says those type of brothers that the sisters will be are vulnerable to. It says they look the part, but they deny the power. They don't apply. They don't change because God gave us the power to change. He don't want to do that, but he looks the part. He says, from such turn away, because the sister has a low self-esteem, she's not going to turn away. She want to follow headlong. Read. For of this sort are they which creep into houses mm -hmm. and lead captive silly women. Laden what type of women? Them. What type of women it is? Read. And lead captive silly women. Dumb sisters. That will receive every man into their house is as captive silly women, we are laden with what? Laden with sins. Laden with sins. Meaning what? This sister has got a lot, lot of demons on it. So this brother is not going to correct, rebuke, command the sister to get her mind right. No. She will make the sister feel comfortable in these sins because he just wants the box. Right? Laid away with diverse lusts. That's the key right there. The sister is led away with diverse lusts. So now, because you have a low self-esteem, you come in, the brother is able, because a whoremonger is able to identify a sister that has daily issues. That's why when you come in Israel, we are, we are fathers to you, you sisters. You brothers as well. Yeah, we fathers to you. Because guess what? Because if you don't, you don't agree with that, that's fine. You will remain in your simp mode. No problem. You become a simp, you remain a simp. And a hunter, that sister, that Jezebel sister that hunts for you type of man, she will get you. Okay. Now watch this. Now, how do you deal with this? Get that in second as a 769. You understand? Because you must have that confidence. You understand? And the confidence that you must have is this. Give me first John 5 14 real quick. First John 5 is 14. This is how you make sure that you have that confidence always. Okay? You don't have confidence in yourself because the Lord told you already that you say what? He says, subdue your own understanding. First John 5, 14. Read that. First book of John, chapter 5, verse 14. Go ahead. And this is the confidence that we have in him. This is the confidence that we have in him. The him is Christ. Read. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. You see that? We ask anything according to his will, his, the Lord will hear you. But we, our confidence, it must be in Christ, not in yourself. Okay? Second Ezra 769. Because now, this is how you cure your sick mind. This is how you cure your spirit in order for you to get your spiritual life in order. Read that. Second Ezra 769. Second book of Esther, chapter 7, verse 69. Read. Right. And being judged, if he should not forgive them that are cured of his, with his word, right. put out the multitude of contentions. You see what the Lord is saying? It says, because he's the judge, it says, if, if he should not forgive them that are cured with his word and put out the multitude of contentions. What is he saying? The Lord said, the Ezra is telling us that the word of God is what's going to heal you. The word of God is what's going to cure your spirit. It's going to set your spirit aright. You understand? The laws of God is the cure to your sick mind. That's what he sent to us right there. Okay, give me Psalms 107 verse 20. Psalms 107 verse 20. Those laws is what's going to cure our sick minds. Okay. Read. Come on, Psalms, Psalms 107, verse 20. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 107, verse 20. Mm -hmm. He sent his word and healed them. And what? And healed them. And healed them. The word of God is what's going to heal our sick mind. 
That's where we deal with our spiritual life so that our spiritual life can be in order. That spiritual house can be on point. Ready? And deliver them from their destruction. The Lord will deliver us from our, from our destruction, from our sicknesses, our plagues, our ignorances, our evils. You understand? He's going to deliver us when we allow his word to heal us. Okay? Now, let's deal with the next point. Okay? We dealt with the first point. The first point is you must what? The Lord give us the power to change. The first point of contact is what? You must what? You must reform your spiritual life according to God's laws. So, I mean, there's a lot of things to cover. I just picked a couple of examples to give an idea. These are the steps that you must deal with. The step number two, the second point is you must what? You must deal with your health life. Your health. Your physical health. I get it now your spiritual life is on point. Now you must deal with your what? Your physical health. Now watch this. Okay. Give me, give me the book of 3 John, verse 1. 3 John, verse 1. Watch this. 3 John and verse 1. Third book of John, verse 1. Read. Right. The elder unto the well beloved Gaius, mm -hmm. whom I love in the truth. Whom I what? Whom I love in the truth. So now Gaius was in the truth. So John is saying, Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Because they are in the truth, what are they doing? They are learning how to deal with their spiritual life. The only way for you to know that your spiritual life is jacked up, you must be in the truth. Like we are now. Now we begin to learn that, guess what? My spirit is not right. I need to apply God's commandments and reform my, my, my mind. Ready? Verse 2, come on. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, mm -hmm. even as thy soul prospereth. You see what he's saying? He says he what? He says he wish above all things that we may prosper and be in health. That goes into your health life. You understand? Eating healthy and exercising. That's step number two. You, you get your mind right. Now you begin to realize, oh, okay, you know what? I get tired easy. You know what? Um, my skin is not right. You understand? I'm fat. I'm shapeless. Um. Um, I'm unfit. I don't eat right. You understand? I've got sicknesses. I've got physical hang-ups and so forth. Guess what? That's time now because your mind is going to now start to see that, you know what? Because now we've got sense. The mind is going to say, you know what? I need to start exercising because now we're going to the scriptures to, to bring that out. Okay? Read that part again, verse 2. Come on. Third book of John, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Really? Even as thy soul prosper. Even as your soul prosper, your soul is your mind, which is your spirit, which is the first point we dealt with. Next verse. Come on. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee. And did what? And testified of the truth. That is in thee. And testified of the truth that is in you. So in order for that truth to come in you, you must be in it first. Then you, you are taught, so you are taught, you are taught the truth, you are taught the truth so the truth can be in you. The truth is in you, is going to teach you, okay, I must get my mind right. Secondly, I must get my health, my physical health in order. That's what we're reading here. It says, he says what? He came and testified of the truth that is in thee. Go ahead. Even as thou walkest in the truth. Now you're going to walk in the truth. Now you're applying. You see that? Now you're starting to apply that which is ready. Now watch this. Give me that in Sarah 30 verse 15. We must deal with our health. Okay? I'm giving you the steps of repentance here. The steps of being born again. The stages of being born again. Sarah 30. Verse 15, come on. The book of Sarah, 
book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 15. Wait. Health and good state of body are above all gold. Wait. And a strong body above infinite wealth. You see what he's saying? Health and good state of body are above all gold. And a strong body is above infinite wealth. So you having a healthy body, you understand? And good state of your body, meaning what? You have, your body is functioning correctly. You understand? Your blood, your, because it's not just what it looks on the outside. It's how it functions on the inside as well. The same way is not how you look on the outside, but it's how your mind operates as well. What it, what it looks on the outside well, is is a reflection of what it looks on the inside. Yeah, you see that both spiritually and physically. Understand? Okay, so that's why it says health and good state of body are above all gold, and a strong body above infinite wealth. Watch this. Give me that in First Timothy four verse eight. For you to have a healthy body and a strong body, here's what you need to do. The Lord gave us; He gave us solutions. He gave us a way out. Watch this. First Timothy 4, verse 8. Read that. First book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 8. Come on. For bodily exercise profited little. Stop right there. Bodily exercise, it profits little. So the Apostle Paul is not saying it doesn't profit. No, it does profit. It does profit. So that's why we must exercise. So in order for you to have a a strong and a healthy body, you must exercise. You understand? That's one of the things that you must do. Exercise. Run a couple of blocks. Do some skips. Do some push-ups. Do some sit-ups. You understand? Do cardio and so forth. All of them. They're all part of what you having a healthy and a strong body. You understand? Now watch this. Go back to 30, 30 verse 16 now. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30. Verse 16. Wait. There is no riches above a sound body and no joy above the joy of the heart. You see that? There's no riches that are that can trump a sound body. And there's and no joy above the joy of the heart, above the joy of your mind. Remember, it says, even as your soul prospers. So your mind is prospering because you are applying God's laws to get your to make sure that your spirit is healthy. Secondly, guess what you do now? You now, you're starting to exercise to get your physical health in shape, to get your physical health, to get your physical body health. You understand? You, you see that thing? Then you're going to have the joy of the heart. Read on. Death is better than a bitter life or continual sickness. So death is better. Because imagine you are in and out of hospital. There's always something. You are sick all the time and so forth. Is a death is better than a better life because now, guess what? A better life it means your mind. This you have the spirit of bitterness. You understand? And because your body is messed up, because you are not applying God's commandments. That's why you see today with the corona, this Omicron, and all these the the, the different variants of the corona, is killing many of our people because we don't eat healthy. Our immune system is weak. We eat fried chicken, you understand? We eat the pato, the scopo, is it, we eat the quarter. We There's no veg. We eat meat a lot, less veggies. You understand? So that's why now our immune system is weak. During the time of the corona, I mean, our people were buying ginger, ginger, garlic. And guess what? You go to the shops, that thing was hell of expensive. But your body will not be able to the immune system will not be boosted in two weeks, in three weeks, in a month, in two months. No, it takes time. It's not going to happen like that. You understand? You have to change your whole lifestyle. That's the point. Now watch this. Um, that's verse 17, right? Now give me Sarah 30, uh, read verse 23 for me. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30. Verse 23. Wait. Love thine own soul mm -hmm. and comfort thy heart. Go ahead. Remove, remove sorrow far from thee. 
for sorrow hath killed many, and there is no profit therein. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, love thy own soul. How do you do that? You exercise. That's why I tell you, brothers, you must exercise. Including myself. We must exercise. Why? Because it's part of loving your soul. It's part of loving yourself. So the Lord is telling us that you don't exercise, you don't love yourself. You hate yourself. Because guess what? You don't exercise, you're not going to have a strong body. You're not going to have a healthy body. You're going to you, you start to gonna have sicknesses and diseases. You understand? That's why it says, love thy own soul and comfort thy heart. You comfort your mind. Because when you exercise, you sweat. It releases the toxins out of your spirit. You understand? It's, it releases these toxins that are trapped in your body. You understand? So you comfort your mind. But when you don't love yourself, guess what? You want to comfort yourself with what? Ice cream. You're going to comfort yourself with just overeating. You comfort yourself with unhealthy food. You understand? You don't take care of yourself because of what? You don't love your own soul. Because if you cannot love yourself enough to do what? To get your spiritual life together, to get your, to start to exercise, to eat healthy. What makes you think that you're going to be able to love somebody else that you say you want to marry? It's not going to happen. You're not going to be able to love them because you can't stand yourself. What makes you think you'll be able to accommodate somebody else? Impossible. So we need to start to think about those things. Because if you don't love yourself enough to exercise, to eat healthy, guess what? You hate yourself so much that you won't do that to yourself. What makes you think you love your husband? What makes you think that you love your wife? If you cannot do that for yourself before you meet your wife or your husband. You see that? That's what the Lord is saying right there. So that's why a lot of you, I tell you, did you exercise? Did you skip? Did you do this? No, I forgot. No, I didn't get to it. No, that means you hate yourself. It's because you hate yourself. You don't prioritize that thing. It's not a priority to you. You see that? So you expecting me to love you, but you don't love yourself enough to what? To get yourself right, your mind. The software must be upgraded, must be reformed. Your mind must be renewed. Then also, you must exercise, you must eat healthy, so on and so forth. That's what the Lord is saying. Aki, what, how, how will I be able to love you, but when you don't love yourself? You are going to be a burden to me. You are going to be a burden to the sister. The sister now is going to start, the sister will, will become your mother now. You see that? That's crazy. Okay, now watch this. Um... So you can't be comforting yourself with those things. You comfort yourself with the laws of God. Okay, watch this. Give me Song of Solomon 2 verse 5. Song of Solomon 2 verse 5. I'm slowly now getting into the eating. You want a full class? Go to the YouTube. We have a class up there. It says don't eat like a pig. Okay, read that. Song of Solomon 2 verse 5. Read that. Song of Solomon chapter 2 verse 5. Go ahead. Stay Stay me with flagons. Mm -hmm. Comfort me with apples. For yeah. I am sick of love. You see that? So it says, stay me with flagons. What are flagons? Raisins. That goes into grapes and so forth. Dried ones. Then it says, comfort me with apples. Don't comfort yourself um, the ice cream. A full tub of ice cream. And then you have enablers around you. Yeah, just eat, girl. Yeah, eat that cord. You understand? You comfort yourself with alcohol. You just keep drinking, but I keep on walk. I just drink. In the morning, you're not going to have babalas. They're lying to you. You see that? Because you now you're finding comfort in things that are destructive to your soul and your body. You want comfort food? Buy an apple. You understand? You want comfort food? Make a smoothie. You see that? Some comfort themselves with a prostitute. Some comfort themselves by choking the chicken. Yeah. Watch this. Get to that 30 verse 23 now. Okay, read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 23. Wait. Love thine own soul and comfort thy heart. Mm -hmm. Remove sorrow far from thee. Come on. For sorrow hath killed many, and there is no profit therein. There is no profit because now if you don't love yourself, you don't comfort your heart with God's laws, with healthy food, Guess what's going to happen? You're going to have sorrow. You understand? You're going to have death. 
and there's no profit in therein. That's what the Lord is saying. Now read verse 25. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 25. Come on. A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. Now we're going into diet because you cannot just exercise without having a good diet. There's no, there's no exercise that will be that will replace a good diet. So the two go hand in hand. That's why it says a cheerful and good heart. That's why a lot of the times you see, brother, the brother is always depressed. The brother hardly can get a smile out. You understand? He's mean-spirited. Sisters as well. Sister is depressed. Sister, are you fine? Yes, say I'm fine. But you can see the sister's not fine. Because in your mind, your, your spirit ain't right. There's something wrong with your spirit. You got the devil on you. So now it says, a cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. Because you love your own soul in verse 23. Part of you loving yourself, guess what? You will have a care of your meat and diet. Meaning what? You're going to mind the things you eat, what you eat, and how you eat. You're going to be mindful of that. You understand? Because you know the consequences of not doing that. is going to bring what? It's going to bring heaviness of mind, sorrow of mind. And it's going to eventually bring death unto you. That's what the Lord is saying. Watch this. Now, give me Sarah 31, verse 16. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 31, verse 16. Come on. Eat as it becometh a man. Mm -hmm. Those things which are said before thee, and devour not, lest thou be hated. You see what it's saying? It's as eat as it becometh a man. Meaning, eat like a man. The reason why it's telling you is that some brothers, they eat like what? You eat like a beast. Like a cow. You see, a cow just keeps eating. They never stop. That's why they are fat. Because a cow does not, does not have wool. Some sisters also, they always have to have something in their mouth. Just be trained like a cow. It says, eat as it becometh a man. Don't eat like a beast. It says, those things which are said before thee, devour not lest thou be hated. People are going to talk about you not in a good way. You understand? Jump down to verse 19. Wait. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 31, verse 19. Come on. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. You see that? A very little is sufficient. Sufficient for a man that is well nurtured, well taken care of. You understand? The one that loves his own soul. The one that, is what, that has a care of his meat and diet. That's what the Lord is saying right there. A very little is sufficient. Okay, read on. Watch this. And he fetched not his wind short upon his bed. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters as well. If you are you, if you don't have a care of your meat and diet, you don't eat health. And yes, you're following the dietary law, but you don't eat the 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 the, the right amount. Every time you eat it, like in my cake, Kim, Kim Mount Kilimanjaro on your plate. You understand? Or you have small portions, but you're eating all the time. So it says, he fetcheth not his wind short upon his bed. I mean, this is a fixable thing, by the way. Imagine you get married now, right? You are even worried when it comes to you going to sleep. You are worried or ish. I mean, uh, there's going to be bombs here at night. I won't be able to sleep because my Lord just be fighting all over the place. My wife, when she falls asleep, she'll just be fighting all over the place. I can't sleep. We wake up in the morning. The house is smelling is 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 is, is, is what's the word? Is stuffy. Your room is stuffy. It doesn't smell like roses. It doesn't smell like. Um, you know, those bed sheets. Because imagine, you, you have clean sheets, but you'll be farting in them sheets because you don't eat correct. So it's like you're just waking backwards. Hmm? Think about it. But you can fix it before you get married. So the, those of you that are married, good luck with that. Okay? You can fix that. <laughs> You married brothers and sisters already. Uh, make sure that uh, you fix that. Okay. 
Understand that? Okay, now watch this. Um, jump down to verse, read verse 23. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 31, verse 23. Come on. Whoso is liberal of his meat, men shall speak well of him. Mm. And the report of his good housekeeping will be believed. You see that the people are going to believe you because they're going to see the way you behave yourself when it comes to meat. When it comes to your meat, he says you are liberal of your meat. Meaning what? You're eating less meat and more veggies in your diet. That's what he's saying. Whoso is liberal of his meat. So if you are liberal, that means you are not, you don't have umkhopol. You're not greedy. No, you just, you just eat you have less meat, but you have more greens, more veggies. You know, there's a lot of colors in your plate. Why? Because you are applying the dietary law. Get that in Genesis 129. We're not saying don't eat meat. No, don't get it twisted. Meat is lawful. Okay. But he says you must be liberal with your meat. More veggies. Genesis 129. Read that. Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. Mom. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb, every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. You see that? God gave us a diet. This is a vegan diet that God gave unto us. He introduced meat later on in Genesis 9 after the flood with Noah, forefather. But guess what? You must have lot more veggies, less meat. He's not saying don't eat meat. But be liberal with your meat. Watch this. Give me, um, give me Sarah 38 verse 4. Watch this. Watch how this comes together. Okay. Watch this thing. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 38, verse 4. Come on. He shall serve among great men. No, 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 no. Sarah 38 verse 5. The verse 4, Sarah 38, verse 4. Read that. Excuse me, sir. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 38, verse 4. Read. Right. The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth. Mm -hmm. And he that is wise will not abhor them. You see that? The Lord hath created medicines, plural. Medicines out of the earth. The medicines that, we, that the Lord created out of the earth. We read about those medicines in Genesis 1, verse 29. Read Genesis 1, 29 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 29. Come on. The go and God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. You see that? To you it shall be for meat. So, the fruits and the veggies. These fruits and veggies, those are the medicines that God created out of the earth. So, just as the laws of God will heal your spirit, the medicines, which is the fruits and veggies that God created out of the earth, will heal your body. You see how that works? You brothers understand that that's your medication on a daily basis. Just as the laws of God will heal your mind, will cure your mind, is likewise the medicines, which is the herbs, the fruits and veggies, the spices that the Lord created out of the earth, they will heal your body. So guess what? You exercise, you eat healthy. When you eat, that's you bringing health to your body. When you study and apply God's laws, that's what brings healing to your spirit. You see that? So both the software in computer terms, both the software and the hardware is operating, is operating at what? At an optimal level. They are both compatible. You understand? They are all running at an optimum level. High standard of thinking. Your thinking is right. The way you think is right. Your body, guess what? Is well nurtured. You are healthy in your body. Guess what? Your veins are correct. You have, the, you have the right amount of white and red blood cells in your system. 
You understand? Your arteries are not clogged. You see that thing right there? You've got good blood flow in your system. You understand? Your hair is growing healthy. You have healthy hair, healthy skin. Your breath don't stink because the certain fruits that you eat to make sure that your gums are healthy, to make sure that your breath don't stink. There's a reason why certain veggies and fruits were created for that, to make sure to, to get rid of the bacteria in your mouth. To, but to, to get rid of the bacteria on your tongue. Some of you, you brush your teeth, you can drink 100 liters of Listerine. The breath still stinks. What's the problem? You're not eating right. You brothers and sisters get that? Now you're talking about you want to kiss the sister, you want to kiss the sister, you want to kiss a brother. Mm -mm. Oh no, no, no. Before you can get mad, these are the things that you must do. Your soft, the, the spirit must be right, which is your mind. Your body also must be right. Because imagine, here you are. Here's another one. Let me deal, let me bring this out. Actually, watch this. Get Leviticus real quick. I want to actually touch on that. You understand? Because, you know, some brothers and sisters just be nasty as hell. Watch this. Get Leviticus 15, right? Leviticus 15 and verse, hmm. uh, wait. Yes, read verse 18. Leviticus 15, read verse 18 for me. I'm going to show you something here. Watch this. The book of Leviticus, chapter 15. You know what? Start, start, start at verse 16. We're going to read down. Watch this. The book of Leviticus, chapter 15, verse 16. And if any man's and if any man's seed of copulation go out from him, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the evening. What is the Lord teaching us? Here? The Lord is teaching us that after you have sex with your wife, wash your behind. That's what he's saying right there. You have sex with your wife. You have sex with your Lord. Those of you that are married, wash your behind up. That's what the Lord is saying right there. After you, you get your rocks off, you just roll over and sleep. Mm -mm. Oh, no. No, no. Wash your behind. Okay? Read again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 15, verse 16. Uh -huh. And if any man's seed of copulation go out from him, Come on. Then he shall wash all his flesh in water and mm -hmm. be unclean until the evening. Because if you're not and if you, you have not washed yourself, you are unclean. That's what the Lord is saying. The Musa even gave us the laws on how to wash our behind. Don't be nasty. Go ahead, verse 17. Every garment and every garment and every skin whereon is the seed of copulation shall be washed with water and be unclean until the evening. You see that? Even the clothes that you know, the sheets and all that, they need to be cleaned. Go ahead. The woman also with whom man shall lie with seed of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the evening. You see that thing? Both the men and women must both be and must both wash themselves. Yeah, I just wanted to bring that out. Okay. So married couples and those that are you brothers that are unmarried, guess what? Keep that thing in mind. Okay. Okay, let's break bread. All praise to the Lord. First Corinthians 11, verse 23. Okay. <laughs> In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, let's break bread. Oh, pray. All oh, praises to the Lord. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. 
This do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.